But I have said to Rick and I said it to him today I want to see what. The results of these reports are and there is going to be accountability. And I'm going to expect even before the reports are done that we are seeing significant improvement. In terms of how the admissions process takes place in all of our VA healthcare facilities. So I know he cares about it deeply and he has been a great public. Servant and a great warrior on behalf of the United States of America. We're going to work with him to solve the problem. But I am going to make sure that there is accountability throughout the system after I get the full report. Steve Holland from Reuters Question, thank you, sir. Has Secretary Shinseki offered to resign? And if he's not to blame, then who is? And were you caught by surprise by these allegations? President Obama, Rick Shinseki I think serves this country because he cares deeply about veterans and he cares deeply about the mission. And I know that Rick's attitude is if he does not think he can do a good job on this and if he thinks he has let our veterans down. Then I'm sure that he is not going to be interested in continuing to serve. At this stage, Rick is committed to solving the problem and working with us to do it. And I am going to do everything in my power, using the resources of the White House. To help that process of getting to the bottom of what happened and fixing it. But I'm also going to be waiting to see what the results of all this review process yields.
I don't yet know how systemic this is. I don't yet know are there a lot of other facilities that have been cooking the books. Or is this just an episodic problem? We know that, essentially, the wait times have been a problem for decades in all kinds of circumstances with respect to the VA getting benefits, getting health care, etc. Some facilities do better than others. A couple of years ago, the Veterans Affairs set a goal of 14 days for wait times. What's not yet clear to me is whether enough tools were given to make sure that those goals were actually met. And I won't know until the full report is put forward as to whether there was enough management. Follow up to ensure that those folks on the front lines who were doing scheduling had the capacity to meet those goals. If they were being evaluated for meeting goals that were unrealistic and they couldn't meet. Because either there weren't enough doctors or the systems weren't in place or what have you. We need to find out who was responsible for setting up those guidelines. So there are going to be a lot of questions that we have to answer. In the meantime, what I said to Rick today is let's not wait for the report retrospectively to reach out immediately. to veterans who are currently waiting for appointments, to make sure that they are getting better service. That's something that we can initiate right now. We don't have to wait to find out if there was misconduct to dig in and make sure that we're upping our game in all of our various facilities. I do think it is important not just with respect to Rick Shinseki, but with respect to the VA generally.
To say that every single day there are people working in the VA who do outstanding work and put everything. They've got into making sure that our veterans get the care, benefits, and services that they need. And so I do want to close by sending a message out there that there are millions of veterans who are getting really good service from the VA, who are getting really good treatment from the VA. I know because I get letters from veterans sometimes asking me to write letters of commendation. Or praise to a doctor or a nurse or a facility that couldn't have given them better treatment. And so this is a big system with a lot of really good people in it who care about our veterans deeply. We have seen the improvements on a whole range of issues like homelessness, like starting to clear the backlog up. Like making sure that folks who previously weren't even eligible for a disability because it was a mental health issue or because it was an Agent Orange issue are finally able to get those services. I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that there are a lot of folks in the VA who are doing a really good job and working really hard at it. That does not, on the other hand, Excuse the possibility that, number one, we weren't just we were not doing a good enough job in terms of providing access to folks who need an appointment for chronic conditions. Number two, it never excuses the possibility that somebody was trying to manipulate the data in order to look better or make their facility look better. It is critical to make sure that we have good information in order to make good decisions. I want people on the front lines, if there's a problem, to tell me or tell Rick Shinseki, or tell whoever is their superior.
that this is a problem. Don't cover up a problem. Do not. Pretend the problem doesn't exist. If you can't get wait times down to 14 days right now. I want you to let folks up the chain know so that we can solve the problem. Do we need more doctors? Do we need a new system in order to make sure that the scheduling and coordination is more effective and more smooth? Is there more follow-up? And that's the thing that right now most disturbs me about the report. The possibility that folks intentionally withheld information that would have helped us fix a problem. Because there's not a problem out there that's not fixable. It can't always be fixed as quickly as everybody would like. But typically we can chip away at these problems. We've seen this with the backlog. We've seen it with veterans homelessness. We've seen it with the post 9 slash 11 GI Bill. Initially, there were problems with it. They got fixed and now it's operating fairly smoothly. So problems can be fixed, but folks have to let the people that they're Reporting to know that there is a problem in order for us to fix it. Question, what about bonuses for those implicated in mismanagement, MR? President. President Obama, we're going to find out. My attitude is. Question. Does that upset you? President Obama, listen, 
if somebody has mismanaged or engaged in misconduct. Not only do I not want them getting bonuses, I want them punished. So that's what we're going to hopefully find out from the IG report, as well as the audits that are taking place. Barack Obama Presser on Veterans Affairs Department Misconduct Delivered May 30, 2014, White House, Washington, D. C. Good morning, everybody. A few minutes ago, Secretary Shinseki and Rob Neighbors, who I've temporarily assigned to work with the VA, presented me with the department's initial review of VA facilities nationwide. Secretary Shinseki has now begun the process of firing many of the people responsible. including senior leaders at the Phoenix VA. He's cancelled any possible performance bonuses this year for VHA senior executives. and he has ordered the VA to personally contact every veteran in Phoenix waiting. For appointments to get them the care that they need and that they deserve. This morning, I think some of you also heard Rick Jen. Shinseki take a truly remarkable action in public remarks, he took responsibility for the conduct of those facilities. and apologize to his fellow veterans and to the American people. And a few minutes ago, Secretary Shinseki offered me his own resignation. With considerable regret, I accepted. Rick Shinseki has served his country with honor for nearly 50 years.
He did two tours of combat in Vietnam he's a veteran who left a part of himself on the battlefield. He rose to command the 1st Cavalry Division, served as Army Chief of Staff. and has never been afraid to speak truth to power. As secretary at the VA, he presided over record investments in our veterans enrolling. Two million new veterans in health care, delivering disability pay to more Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange. Making it easier for veterans with post-traumatic stress. mental health issues and traumatic brain injury to get treatment, improving care for our women veterans. At the same time, he helped reduce veteran homelessness, and helped more than one million veterans. Service members and their families pursue their education under the post-9-11 GI Bill. So Rick's commitment to our veterans is unquestioned. His service to our country is exemplary. I am grateful for his service, as are many veterans across the country. He has worked hard to investigate and identify the problems with access to care. But as he told me this morning, the VA needs new leadership to address them. He does not want to be a distraction. Because his priority is to fix the problem and make sure our vets are getting the care that they need. That was Rick's judgment on behalf of his fellow veterans. And I. Agree. We don't have time for distractions. We need to fix the problem. For now, the leader that will help move us forward is Sloan Gibson. Who will take on the reins as acting secretary?
Sloan became deputy secretary at the VA just three months ago, but he too, has devoted his life to serving our country and our veterans. His grandfather fought on the front lines of World War I. His father was a tail gunner in World War II. Sloan graduated from West Point, earned his airborne and ranger qualifications, and served in the infantry.